Hey guys, I'm Nick. I'm Joe. And uh, welcome to the Car Crush. Today we are comparing two cars that I don't think need to be compared. Uh, wow. Joe's 2020 Defender and my brand new Bronco. Um, it's, you know, people are cross shopping these cars. I, I know you're saying that. Well, I, have two <laughs> I have two friends who are cross shopping these cars and what kind of gave rise to this episode yeah. Is the fact that I've got literally people asking me, why is it that you've had, did you not compare Nick's new Bronco to your 2020 Defender? Okay. I find that hard to believe, but I... I, I do too. <laughs> okay. I do too. I mean, they weren't yeah, for these emails. Because I, mean, I, I will say this, um, never once did I consider that when shopping for this. Which is partly because, as you'd mentioned in the video that we did on the Bronco, that you didn't pay a dealer premium. Correct. I guess that's fair. But, if I was going to pay a $20,000 markup, right. then it lands in, in sort of uh, Defender territory. Your, st your stickered at 55. Dealers yeah. here in LA right now are putting an extra 20 on top of that, which now makes your Bronco a $75,000 car, which, is which puts it squarely in Defender territory. At MSRP. And that's the other thing, is that here in LA right now, defenders also have a $20,000. <laughs> cool. I mean, COVID has, COVID has completely changed the car market right now. And I think there's a certain amount of just people are getting whatever they can get their hands on. Fair. And I think it's people are, people, it's leading people to kind of cross shop cars that were never really intended to compete against one another. Yeah, totally, I agree. So why haven't we shot the Defender yet? I've been holding off. <laughs> because, For? Well, I didn't want to do a negative Defender video. Um, until um, Land Rover, yeah. my local dealer, had had every opportunity to iron out some of the kinks that I've had since the car was new. Right. <laughs> Which and, apparently has been a lot. <laughs> uh, it's, it's sort of a laundry list uh, that, we will, uh, that we will start going over uh, shortly. Okay, great. Um, but I will say that here we have an envelope from Land Rover of Los Angeles, which goes a long way to uh, showing the extent to which both Land Rover and my local dealer went right. to making the situation right, which speaks a lot for the brand. And I know what happened here. I can surely say that Ford would not do the same thing. So, you know. So, should we hit it? Yeah, let's drive. All right, in we go. I mean, she's got some giddy up. Yeah. Basically, the car is it's turbocharged and it's got an electric supercharger. So I guess that means that the supercharger is a more efficient version and that it doesn't, it's not belt driven. Okay. It's actually an electronically driven supercharger. Oh, interesting. Um, and yeah, especially when it's on boost, it really, really pulls. I got it in September of 2020. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, there were some, um, there were some challenges along the way. Yeah. In my car. So without boring and beleaguering the point too badly, actually, as I was editing this down, I realized that not all of you want to sit through four or five minutes of me talking about my Land Rover Defender service history. For those of you who do, I'll tuck that after the credits. What's important to know is that Land Rover of Los Angeles had my Defender for over a month, which is what this envelope is all about. Let's jump back in. What's interesting about this truck is when you look at it on the road, when you drive by a Defender, yeah, it to me, it doesn't seem like it has this really wide uh, sort of athletic squatty stance. And then when you get in it, it feels significantly bigger and I, I guess I should say wider um, than you anticipated looking like it will feel when you're just looking at it from the outside. It feels like a big, heavy car to drive, right? It, it feels very substantial. Yeah. It's huge. Even coming around that sort of like long sweeper on this freeway that we're on, it uh, you can feel how big it is. You're, you're moving a lot of weight. And now there's an even bigger one. There's a 130. There's a longer one now. There's a 90, a 110, and a 130. Yes, yeah, so that's like a long wheelbase Range yeah. Rover, basically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's the wheelbase is the same. I think it's just, it's tacked on to the back. And it has a third row, I think. And this also has a third row, uh, oh. which is good for, it's like an occasional third row. It's like the back seats in a Porsche 911. It's like they're kind of- Right, they're, they're there. They're kind of there if you absolutely have to. Yeah. 
It's interesting because we've been driving all these electric cars recently that are probably the same weight as this. I don't actually know what this weighs. I'm assuming it's very heavy. It's about 5,500 pounds. Yeah. Okay, so we've been driving all these cars that weigh about the same, but it's so it's so fascinating after going uh, driving these super heavy EVs that have all the weight at the bottom and they feel way more athletic, and then you get in a you know a normal uh, gas powered car. Yeah. where everything is, the weight is more evenly distributed throughout. And, uh, you know, it's obviously not going to be as planted. So let's talk about what I like and what I don't like about this car. Okay. So I like the power when it's on boost. I like the f car, the fact that it feels very, very solid. Um, I love the design, both interior and exterior. I love the fact it's got all these like little like shelves to put everything. It's good for us when we're shooting. So it's like, oh, you can put your phone up there or you can put your keys or you know it's yeah got, it's got the refrigerator yeah that's chic um it's got a uh wireless charge station which i know is a big turn on for you yeah i love your, that you know what you problem. know what you know what you're gonna charge it oh that's oh but you got one of those cases that won't let you charge oh no it's charging. oh it charges baby it's charging so this which is what's called your pivi pro um it has tons of functionality i still find it incredibly confusing I know it's all in there. It just, I, it, for me to refine the route to the one thing that I want to do, like for example, turning off the voice control, um, it's in there somewhere. Um, I would probably Google it and it would take me to a place where it would do it and that'd be good. So the electronics are all there, but they're a little, um, not in, terribly intuitive. The radar cruise control in this car is appalling. Mm -hmm. uh, it is basically either, uh, it is either accelerating too hard or braking too quickly. The lane keep assist is pretty useless. Um, I don't quite know why it's there because it won't actually keep you in the lane. And if you think <laughs> it's going to keep you in the lane, it'll just put you in the, into the curb. So I just, you know, I turn that off and I never use it. Um, it's a great road trip car. A long road trip in this car is fantastic. Cause That's, it, it, I agree. That's it, what I would think of. It rides car. incredibly well. Right. Great for four people, five people. Um, more room in the back definitely than my old Sport. Definitely more cargo room than my old Sport. As I mentioned, it's got a third row of seats in the back and a pinch if you're out with some friends and two of them have had too much to drink and they now need a ride home and it's happened a couple of times, you just put them on the way back. Um, I don't love the rear door. It's super heavy. Um, it also opens um, to the curb. So basically, if you are parked and if you open it, it basically does not open onto the curb. It opens away from the curb, mm. which is um, something of annoyance. Um, I will say it has the best stereo system mm -hmm. of any car I've ever had, and that includes the Porsche, even though the Porsche has the Burmester system in it. Mm. So this has the, uh, the Meridian 400 watt um, speaker. Um, 400 watt amplifier in it and the sound is it's like a nightclub in here it's I love fantastic that. nice and I know how you love your nightclubs I do yeah yeah love a nightclub yeah love the curb your car feels like it's got a little more power um, my car feels faster and it feels more athletic yeah your car is arguably is more fun yes I would agree with that my car is more kind of like exhilarating and exciting to drive. This car is more luxurious. So, Defender 110 or Defender 90. Defender 90, yeah. Defender in general versus Ford Bronco. Yes. I, you know, I, I think this is the only time in automotive history where we've seen anything like this where you might compare these two cars. Yeah. I, I, I can't, in driving these two cars, like I've had, you know, whatever it is, two weeks behind the wheel of the Bronco now. I've driven your car a handful of times. I know what the Defender feels like. It's wide, it's heavy, it's luxurious. It's nothing that a Bronco is. The Bronco is fun and sporty and stupid and you can take the roof off and you can drive to the beach and you can like, you know, I don't have leather seats, so you can like spill juice on it if you have a kid and you just don't care because it's a Bronco. And like, it's made to be durable and kind of just throw around and like not worry about parking in a parking lot next to someone. And I think right. for me, comparing these two cars just seems so far out of the realm 
of normalcy that I can't sort of grasp it. I think one point that I kind of want to touch on, which I touched on while we were driving, which was how, uh, how just how wide that car feels when you're in it and when you're driving it. I mean, it feels like you're driving a house. I mean, yeah. It, it feels like you're driving it's, a it's house. It's hard to describe to someone who hasn't driven that car because I, I can only assume if you are looking at this image right now, this feels and looks bigger. It does. The scale on this seems much larger. Much larger. Then this feels more squatty and narrow. And when you're in these two cars, yeah. it is that crazy. feels like it's feet longer. Like, I, I'm not kidding. I mean, it feels... This drives like that looks. Yeah. Yes. This drives like that looks. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's strange. It feels, it, feels like, it feels like a big, heavy, top-heavy car. Yeah, it's but like if an you look at illusion it, looking at these this is, a tall, this is a taller, wider car than this. And yet, this one definitely has... I mean, I would, because I love Land Rover, I would say that it drives in a more substantial and deliberate manner. I wouldn't say yours doesn't feel hunkered down. Yeah. But yeah, this definitely does. It, it drives, it feels more or less like you're driving a house. Yeah, a big house. To me, the only thing comparable in these two cars is that they're both... Um, green. They're both, <laughs> they're both <laughs> green. No, that they're both retro throwbacks to the car of the 60s and 70s. Yeah. To me, it's like that's where the comparison ends. Uh, with that said, you know, you've been talking about this envelope all day long. Um, what's in the envelope? The envelope, please. So here we go. So this is your Vanna White moment. This is my Vanna White moment. Uh, and your Pat, say Jack. Yes. Yeah. Guillermo asks, that's my better half. So they've had the car for a month in service. Yeah. That means we don't have to pay, make our lease payment, right? Right, that would never even cross my mind. And it wouldn't even have crossed mine either, but I figure, well, you know, if you, you, if you, maybe if you squeaky oil gets the grease or something like that, if you don't ask, you don't get. So I asked, and my dealer here in Los Angeles, uh -huh. I believe that's what it, what's in here. I mean, I did sort of save this for this moment. Sure enough, in here is a wow. lease payment. That's your one, it's a month of... It's a month, it's a one month lease payment from Land Rover of Los Angeles. Right. Honestly, that's crazy. A dealer actually cutting you a check for your a lease payment. payment. I, yeah, I, it's not exactly a lease payment. It's like, it's like $75 less, something like that, but it's basically a lease no, payment. No, I mean, that's wild. All right, so you asked for it. We listened. Here's the comparison everybody wants to see. I the still don't believe anybody asked for it. Joe's going to show me the I'm receipts. I'm going to show you the text. I'm going to show you the receipts. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching uh, this amazing comparison video where people are cross-dropping these two cars all the time. Screw you, Nick. <laughs> Screw you. It happens. It happens. Thank you guys for watching. We will be back. Cheers. Oh cool, you made it. Thanks for sticking around. So, boiling down my long diatribe about my Defender's service history to the need to knows, you'll notice that Nick totally glazes over and honestly, I, I don't blame him. Um, I had huge problems with the infotainment system, which is also known as Pivi Pro. It wouldn't play media, tell me the time, it would freeze up and on. That's finally fixed, except when using Apple CarPlay wirelessly, which is an awesome over-the-air over update, which actually happened over this year, um, but it sometimes switches audio sources when restarting the car. The second really annoying issue, in fact, it was even more annoying than the infotainment, I think, was the wind noise um, going over like 70 or 80 miles an hour or so. It was like this air that was like whistling and rush, uh, rushing over the A-pillar on the driver and passenger sides. Back in 2020, the dealer removed and resealed the windshield and applied some sort of factory fix, and it helped it temporarily, but then it returned. The wind noise issue was on my list when I took the Defender to service this past May to take one last stab at getting it fixed. So for these early VIN, December, uh, VIN Defenders, um, there's now a retrofit for the A-pillar trim. So that issue is fixed at last. I'd kind of given up on, on that ever getting fixed. Uh, new on the list of stuff to address was that the plastic cladding on the wheel arches and the lower body was curling and separating from the bodywork. Like the wrong adhesive had been used uh, and now the trim was all just falling off. 
The dealer, to his credit, to their credit, removed and replaced all of that cladding um, with, uh, with new trim. Los Angeles Range Rover Land Rover did not know that we'd be making this video and had the car admittedly for a full month, making the repairs and also addressing a few recalls. Uh, am I happy I had such a rocky, rocky start with the Defender? Absolutely not. But am I very happy with the lengths to which Land Rover and Land Rover Los Angeles has gone to making this right? I am. I'm very happy. Will I get another Land Rover? Yes, probably. I know. I'm a dope. Thanks for watching, you guys. I appreciate it. See you next time.